So I just finished up a really quite a nice lunch for out here in the woods. It was a couple of fried eggs and some fried spam. I know that's not everyone's favorite. And then I baked up myself a strawberry rhubarb dump cake for dessert. Okay, that's not the story though. The story is, is how I did it. I used this, a Keith titanium Dutch oven to do all of that cooking. If you're interested in hearing about that, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I wanna thank Keith for sending out the TI6018 titanium pot and pan. I'll explain that in a moment. And uh, yeah, so the backstory is a number of months ago, I had reached out to Keith and they've been very good in uh, sending me things for testing and review. And I was looking for a pot of a larger size than anything I had in my collection so I could do some cooking with. And uh, I wasn't sure what size it was that I needed, so Keith answered the question for me by sending both of them. In fact, the other pot will sit down inside of this one. That gives you an idea just how big this is. So when this arrived, I said, I, I can't see using this by myself. This is huge. What am I going to use it for uh, out in the woods? But it's something, you know, two, three, four people could easily cook a large meal in this. That's how big this is. But then it occurred to me, it looks like a Dutch oven, right? Well, it is a Dutch oven. Could I use it like a Dutch oven and do some baking? Well, that's what I just did for my lunch. I'll explain how, but there'll be another video coming out parallel to this one where I do a strawberry rhubarb dump cake. It's a keto version, of course, and this is what I cook it in. But I also cooked my lunch up, so a couple of fried eggs and some Spam on, on the lid. So let me just go through a few of the specifications for it, then I'll explain how I use this in that way. So. Overall, the dimensions for this, and of course this is all going to be in the video description for you, is 8.7 inches across the top and 4.8 inches tall. It is an 84.5 fluid ounce capacity and it weighs 13.1 ounces. I'll put the metric uh, along with the Imperial in the video description for you. Yeah, so it, it's a big pot. It is actually quite a huge pot. By the way, the handles are covered in silicone and they fold down out of the way. And of course, Keith did send a stuff sack with it, which is nice to keep everything organized. So I thought when I, at home, I started playing with this at home and at home and doing some baking in, in my backyard with it. And then we realized that they said this was a pot and pan. Well, how would you use this as a pan, like a fry pan? Upside down, like that, with a pot grabber. You can hold this and use it like a fry pan over a heat source. And you can see I've done exactly that. I've used it like a fry pan. Now that discoloration you see is not from the frying. Uh, there might have been a little oil in there that kind of uh, seasoned into the titanium. Some of that is from charcoal because this is the pot. Look, you can see the depth of it. You can see there's some discoloration inside of it that I baked with. And what I did, um, okay, so titanium is not a great conductor of heat. That's why people complain so often that it gets hot spots and that it will burn food. And that's true if you're not careful and you don't understand how titanium works and you're not watching your heat. And, and there's a number of tricks for it, of course. But I have enough experience with titanium now to know how best to use it. Now, at the same time, while it's not a good conductor of heat, it won't hold heat either. Not like cast iron or, or carbon steel will, or even cast aluminum would be better than this for baking in. So I needed to add something to this pot to give it thermal mass, something that would hold the heat inside of the pot and at the same time provide a bit of a spacer uh, above the bottom of the pot to direct, so that the, what I was baking was not directly in contact with the heat and burn the bottom of it. Small uh, pizza stone, round pizza stone that I got from the firebox stove. I'll, I'll put the size of it in, it's their smaller version, and it went inside and there was actually more than enough room. The larger one is just a bit too big. It, it will fit in, but because of the round bottom of the pot, I'm not sure it's in full contact with the bottom. So I used the small one and the small one worked just fine. Yeah, so just a different way of using something this large that I would, you know, cook a large meal in for a number of people. I was able to use, oh yeah, here's the other trick. How did I put hot coals on the top? By putting the lid in upside down. That's where the charcoal stains come from on top of the lid. So that's still deep enough for me to do some baking with. This holds charcoal on top or coals from a fire if that's what you're using. I use charcoal today because we're in a fire banner. That's all I'm permitted to use. It will work to hold the coals in down relatively close to the food inside and work 
amazingly well as a Dutch oven, as if you want to see the proof of that. Well, I'll put a couple of clips inside of this video, but if you want to see the, the entire baking, um, there'll be a video link probably at the end of this one. I'm not sure which one will come out first. Okay, not a lot to say about this. Let's just wrap this up with a few comments after I show you a couple of clips of me using this to cook my lunch. I gave myself a bit of a challenge though. I don't mind admitting that the test is going to be in the flipping. Because the shape of this pan really doesn't lend it well, so well to flipping because of that central hub, if you will. But just the same, I can get my spatula under it, that is. Okay. I'd say that's working out pretty good for a couple of fried eggs. All right, so it's been about 15, maybe 20 minutes. I wasn't keeping as close a time as I probably should have. I have had a look and I know it is ready to come off. So uh, what I want to show you now, first off, is that there's a bit of a trick to getting the lid off when you set it upside down like that. I have my tongs, but just a simple set of pot grabbers is all I need to grab the lid. And say, oh, look at, oh, a little bit too much. Yeah, okay, overflowed a little bit on the top, but that's okay. Let's to get that off of the heat. I should have taken it off when I looked a minute ago before it overflowed. Ah, just another look. It is done, by the way. I just have an overflow, which I should not have. All right, a few closing comments for the Keith TI6018 titanium pot and pan. Do you know, when they first sent this to me, I thought, I'll never use this. But when I came up with the idea of using it as a Dutch oven to bake in, it just gave it a whole new life. And I'll do this again without question because it's a lot lighter to carry into the woods than is a cast iron Dutch oven. Yes, you do have to carry some kind of a thermal mass to hold the heat like the pizza stone that I use, but it worked out so very, very well. And it fried up my eggs and it fried up my spam. So I can't complain, it, it got multiple uses out of it. Okay, I will put the links as well as the description for this item in the video description, but if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.